The Sandy and Todd Cast is a Mind Garden Media podcast in association with Screw You Todd Productions. Seems like we've been going on forever in this season, but we're only on episode two. So that tells you. <laughs> I don't my... know how to take that. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like a long season already, and we're only on episode two. So it's because we've been planning and talking about everything so much lately. This is season five, episode two. Today, we're really talking about paranormal, weird stuff. How would you how would you encapsulate all the stuff we're gonna talk about today? Because I just it's... sent you something more that I want to talk about on the show, too. It's sort of, I'm going to call it a hodgepodge. Okay. I love that word. Or smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. I, I like smorgasbord it. better. Smorgasbord. Yeah. All right. We were, we'll get into it. And you're going to find out, too, that the name of the podcast says everything. Season 5, Episode 2, Watch Out, Sandy's Pissed, is next on the Sandy and Todd <laughs> cast. Hey, gang. We are Damon. Sue. And Amy Lynn. From the Adelaide Park Paranormal Society. Join us for each episode of the Apps Alchemy podcast as we take a deep dive into the world of the paranormal, cryptids, the occult, and more. We've seen, heard, and experienced almost everything, and now we're bringing it all to you. Find us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and anywhere you might find your podcasts. Apps Alchemy podcast is a Mind Garden Media production. Broadcasting from two very different yet magical places not found on any map. Get ready to discuss the strange, weird, ghostly, crazy, spooky, and odd things that take place around us each and every day. All while having a little bit of fun. This is the Sandy and Todd Cast. Here we are, Season 5, Episode 2 of the Sandy and Todd cast. She's Sandy. He's Todd. And we're and here to talk. And it's and a smorgasbord. this has been going on and on forever this season, according to you. It I just it feels like <laughs> it's longer. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what's going well, on. It just feels like we really didn't get a break or... Well, I don't you know, know what part of it is, is because next week, well, yeah. actually, not even next week, like this week, when we're out there with you, it's sort of going to be awkward in how we're going to keep the episodes going. And yeah. then we came up with the brilliant idea of what we're going to do, which everybody needs to tune in for. But there's a lot of planning that goes into it and trying to figure out how we're going to do it. I've been um, talking to a couple of potential guests this past week, paranormal based guests. You know, so we've been talking a lot about it and new plans for the season and the way we want to go with it. And we're like that. Like we change our minds on the drop of a dime. Well, I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think what no, we do is we, no. f- we figure out where we're at and where we want to go. And sometimes the path does change it ahead of you. We've also got a lot going on in our work lives. And yeah. like you mentioned, we've got vacation coming up. And mm-hmm. I think that, too, you know, we've got another podcast called the Empathicary Podcast, which we have not had any time to really focus on, I which know. we do want to focus on. And so we're shifting our podcasts a little bit to include those podcasts with the Sandy and Todd cast a little bit. So which which you know. is so funny because we were both thinking the same thing. I know I have been for a while now because I love the Empathicary podcast. It was a brilliant idea that you had. I give you that. I totally give you that. It was, it's a brilliant idea for a podcast. But with all of the things we have going on in our lives, <laughs> it's just not it, we haven't we've abandoned our baby. So it's a great thought that we have now to move forward with it and be able to incorporate it into this podcast, the Sandy and Todd cast. So I'm really excited about that. So this time uh, next week, this time now we're recording this on a Friday. Yep. This uh, at this point next week we are going to be on Washington Island. Yay! 
And maybe by this time of the day, thinking about being done there, I don't know, it depends on how much we get through and then get back yeah. to the mainland and, and uh, stop off for some drinks and food and all that kind of stuff. But I, I'm really looking forward to the The weather's looking good so far. Yes. It's, I am so excited. It was so funny because I had to check the weather website yeah. because I usually like, when I, you know me, you saw last year, when I go on vacation, I run the gamut of clothing and what ifs. I am the perfect what ifer. So what if I need this? What if it gets cold? What if it rains? What if it's hot? What if this? What if that? So I was trying to figure out what the climate would be like there because Washington Island is more north than we are here. You and I have similar climates, but then Washington Island is about three hours north. So that makes a huge difference. It does. And it's surrounded by the Great Lakes. So it's this right. island in the middle of what is Green Bay, the bay itself, not the city, and uh, the, the, the Lake Michigan. And so that, and it's a small lake, or not a small lake, it's a small island. So it it really takes in what the weather has up there. And so, so you know, so we, while we do. Thursday, it's going to be like in the 80s or high 70s, low 80s in Oshkosh, Wednesday and Thursday when we're there. Mm hmm. Friday and Saturday in on Washington Island, Sister Bay area, it's going to be in the high 60s, low 70s, which to me is perfect. Absolutely perfect. You are going to love because you get the breeze off the bay and off mm -hmm. the lake and all that kind of stuff. And you get that smell in the air. I mean, it's yes. just it's very magical up there. You will find yourself falling in love. And I have thought many times in my life about moving to Door County. And yeah. that would be a perfect place for me to move to, get away from all the bullshit and, yep. and just live up there. Um, yeah. But you'll also see, I think, when we go up, how there, especially on Washington Island, but even parts of, of Door County, mm -hmm. there could definitely be some darker energy. Yes. Yes. You know, so, so I think we should do a little little research on on um, on the island itself. So we have something we can reference. Mm -hmm. And then I really think that, you know, we're going to we're going to be doing some podcasts up there that we uh, we've never done before, which is kind of like with each other, which is something we've I never know. done. We've never never done a I podcast know. right next to one another, but I literally know. recording on our phones and stuff like that from yeah. locations and kind of piecing and it all together. Dave's going to take some videos of us and things, and we're going to do lots of pictures and fun stuff, too, because I think everybody needs to experience this with us. Everybody's been following us now for a long, long time, Todd. We're on season five, and, you know, you sort of get to know each other through it, and especially in our group that we have, Stay Weirdos, everybody really gets along, and you get to know everybody. So I think it'll be fun to take everybody along with us this time to enjoy all of our travels and you better believe I'm bringing my crystals. I'm bringing my pendulum. Well, I have a couple of pendulums. I'm going to bring the, my, my basic one that always calls to me and I'm going to bring some digital recorders and some odds and ends of ghost hunting equipment with me too. I think maybe the Mel meter and stuff like that. Cause I think that it's going to be an interesting trip up there. I'm going sure. to, I'm definitely bringing my bag of tricks with me. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it'll be exciting. So looking forward to that. But today's podcast really is about just some weird things that we have talked about in the past that have kind of come up a little bit again in right. news and in one of them, now, before the podcast, I'll just say I did not roll tape. I thought about it, though, because I thought it would be funny to get you all wound up about her, about your phone and stuff. But <sighs> I didn't. I didn't because, you know, it's not not like some of the other audio I would have gotten from you. But she was wound up the minute we got I on was. the phone call. I could see I'd see it. And I was like, hi, how are you? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, you know, here's the funny thing about that is. It's difficult sometimes to ha not only have a best friend, but be a best friend in the dynamic that we have mm -hmm. because we sort of are each other's sounding board a lot. Yeah. And not only does it feel great to have somebody I can rely on for that, but then at the same time, I feel a little bit guilty because sure. I don't want to put it on you. <laughs> So it's kind of a weird dynamic that we have. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But as soon as like I saw you, I was like ready to go. 
Boom. Here's the other thing. We really, I mean, we've been, we've both been so busy that we haven't yeah. had a chance to really chat, chat, oh, chat. Yeah. And so when we do, it's like, hey, how are you? Kaboom. Do you remember Here those we go. chiffon margarine commercials back in the day? And yeah. Mother Nature was there and she would say, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Kaboom, yes. right? Yep, yep, yep. That's kind of what it's like when I get on the call with, with Sandy. So. So, yeah, so I was just filling him in on my phone and uh, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it right now because my blood pressure is going to go sky high. But let me just fuel- say go ahead, that yeah. I hate my phone. That's all <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say is I hate my phone. But feeling that is one of the stories that we've talked about and gotten kind of worked up about over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is the conjuring house. Uh, yes. Did you hear that? Uh. I yes. saw this story a, a few days ago, actually, and I thought, man, we're probably going to have to talk about this because it's something we talked about before. And we kind of laid out the ground rules of how we felt somebody should, you know, sell this property and blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. then it ends up selling. Well, you know, I don't even know if angry is I guess angry a little bit pissed a little bit, but I think really disappointed is the big word for me. Now, The Conjuring House, everybody knows it's the house that the movie The Conjuring was based on. There's also two books out um, about it, written by one of the girls who lived in that house. Uh, Her name is Andrea Perrin, and she wrote House of Darkness, House of Light 1 and 2. And it's her real-life account of her family and their time in this house and it's riveting it is riveting it's not as much like the movie as you might think it is because of course is with a movie todd they take a lot of uh liberties with it yeah Yeah. and you know you've got to you've got to really cut it down and embellish it and things like that which is not to take away from the movie because the movie was fantastic but it's a little bit different. So I recommend any readers out there, House of Darkness, House of Light, Andrea Perrin, what, book one and book two, read them. It's fantastic. So the house itself is in Burrowville, Rhode Island. It was built in 1736, but official records don't have it listed until 1836, which I think is interesting. The land that it's on, this is how far back this goes. The land that it's on was actually, I think, drafted maybe. Uh, John Smith, Captain John Smith of Pilgrim fame, actually was the one, and I'm pretty sure it was John Smith. I'm doing this off of I think you're right. uh, Was the one who had something to do with this land. So we're talking, this goes back really, really far. Okay, Everybody knows how I feel about energy and land. So it's even older than Captain John Smith. Um, so a couple of years ago, in 2019, a couple bought the house for like $439,000 and, um, <sighs> sigh, they turned it into a kind of bed and breakfasty investigation place. And Todd and I, Todd, you and I have talked about this many times that that's probably not the best thing to be doing with this house, regardless of what's in there. And nobody knows for sure what's really in there, but it's not a good thing that's in there. And I think for me, it really is this. And that is whenever you have a place like this, to think that you're going to make a business Mm -hmm. off of what has happened in the past just seems like a really, really bad mistake. That goes for places, and we've talked about this too, but like um, mental asylums and all that kind of stuff, to buy a place like that and determine that you're going to make a living off of sending all these people through, investigating every weekend, all that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. and stirring up that energy and bothering those spirits, it just seems like a really bad idea to me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that it's... I learned a lot from watching shows that go into these places. Mm -hmm. I did. I learned a lot. And I think that there's a difference between going in and I'm going to say it, Ghost Adventures. Uh, Need I say more? There's a difference between that and let's say a kindred spirits where they just went into the uh, asylum up by you in the last season. Sheboygan. 
And they went in with a lot of respect and they went in trying to figure out why the spirits were there, why they were upset, how they feel, put themselves in that kind of empathy type of situation and learn from them. I think that's 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 exactly a great word to use. I think if you're going into any location and you're trying to learn the history of it and Mm -hmm. learn, learn about the people who have been there and in, you know, in the process of doing that, you also investigate to figure out what might still be there. That's one thing. It's another thing to think you're going to, you know, create some sort of money making scheme off the whole deal. Just and yeah. and in this location, like we've mentioned before, the uh, Conjuring House, there's some really dark stuff that have gone on there. And um, yeah. why would you even want to put anybody at risk with that? I just. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And it's just not something that I would partake in. As bad as I'd want to go into a place, I just, it's so personal for me, especially having abilities. It's so personal for me to walk into a place. Now, we'll be um, sometime this season. I kind of have to not talk a lot about it right now because uh, we're doing a fundraiser and releasing the results of the investigation to benefit the place that we're going. But we just recently did an investigation at a jail and it was extremely personal for me. And I go into every location with nothing but respect and trying to understand, because I think that's what the goal should be. It's not for cheap thrills. The goal is to try and understand. And so I'm not so sure that it would be, for me personally, exciting or fulfilling for me to go into a place with such dark energy because that's really not what I'm about. And I guess if that's what you're about, that's fine. But it's just a fine line there because you do risk a lot when you go into a situation like that. And it's different So, for example, in this investigation we just did at the jail, towards the end of the investigation, it felt like some dark energy was coming through. We did a seance. And so we closed the seance immediately, immediately, because that's not what we wanted to be dealing with. And so I think to purchase a location, knowing that there's negativity, that there's negative energy there and saying, here, pay me X amount of money and then you can go in and see it for yourself. I'm not so sure that's the right way to go about it. If they wanted to open it, open it up mm-hmm. as somewhat of a museum and mm-hmm. take tours through, that's one thing. Right. It's the other thing that they were doing all the investigation stayovers and all that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that kind of... And the other thing is you never know who's coming in. You don't know the investigators, whether or not they're really schooled enough to be messing around with that kind of stuff. Exactly. So in other words, basically what happened was these people bought the house. They thought they Mm -hmm. were going to make a ton of money doing this and just realized it really wasn't turning out the way they wanted it to be. They wanted to Mm -hmm. do something else with their lives. Uh, They had other stuff going on. I think there may have, may have been an illness or something like that too, that, that, that they were considering. Oh, there's a surprise. Right. You live in, you live in a really dark place and now your family's having health issues. Yeah. Um, So they sold it and somebody bought it for, is it 1.5 million? Yeah. Which is interesting because they're, (laughs) <laughs> the amount they put on the market was 1.2 and this person paid 1.52 million. So it actually went up. They didn't they get them down a, in price. They must've had a up. fight. Must've had a, a fight of people who really wanted to buy that property. I guess so. At which it makes me a little uncomfortable in and of itself that so many people wanted this property because I don't think anybody should be in there. I just don't I know think you anybody don't. should be I in there. I look at it as, It's a cool for me, you know how I feel about houses and land and all that kind of stuff. If I just looked at it as a regular house on a regular plot of land, I would see the historic side of it. Right. And I would be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I really like that. I could see myself, you know, going out there and being alone for the rest of my life. That would be great. But I know the background story and it's like, nah, probably pass on this one. Exactly. Now, I read somewhere. Don't quote me, but I did read somewhere a long time ago that people have lived in that house previously and have never had any activity, 
which also leads me to the idea that I think it sometimes it's the chemistry of the people in the house or and something that they do while they're there. Exactly. You know, maybe no, maybe people who live there lived there for a long time and never tried to communicate, never tried right. to. And then all of a sudden somebody did. Now, you know, the, the podcast that I do with um, Tony, mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, ghost stories online. Yep. He knows the the Peron, Perrin, 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 what? Perrin. Yeah. He knows Which her. I'm so jealous They're about. really friends. I'm so jealous. And, I know. And I would love to have him on our podcast and talk about some of the stories that he's been told yeah. by her because, you know, they've talked very. I would love very, to have her on the podcast. I know. That would be riveting. I'm telling you right now, it would be riveting. So, but I, and I, I just don't think people should be living there. I think it would be amazing, like you said, to open it up as sort of a museum because it's so historic and let people come there. So that reminds me, though, the woman who bought this house, yeah, the Conjuring House. Got it. Um, her name is Jacqueline Nunez and she's 58 years old. She is a Boston real estate developer. And she said from the moment she saw it, she just had to have it. And this is interesting. This is gonna, things that make you go, hmm. The people who owned it, who sold it to her, made her, I guess they put it in the contract, she is not allowed to actually live, live there for any extended period of time. Which means that she can have people come in and she can stay there. She can, quote unquote, move in there, but she can't it technically live there. So she could use it like as, let's say, like a time. weekend getaway. Yeah. Which is weird because now that makes me think that what happened? Well, Did, obviously something happened, I think. Right. Besides that, have you ever? Here's the other thing. Have you ever heard of a house selling and somebody being able to put that kind of stipulation on it. I know. How are they allowed and to make some sort of stipulation like that? This is the part that makes me so disappointed. Okay, a little bit pissed, but disappointed mostly. She's going to do the same thing that they did. Of course, she's a developer, right? Yep, she's going to do the same exact thing. She's going to have it as an overnight paranormal investigation location. Difference is, though, this family did that, but they also lived in the house, correct? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. So I watched, and I can't tell you, I might, if I can find it, I might put it in the show notes. I watched a show on one of the pay channels. I'm pretty sure it was Discovery Plus, but it may have been Amazon too, because I have all of them. Um, it was sort of like, it wasn't amazingly well done, but it was this group of quote unquote investigators who giggled and laughed a lot and acted stupid, but they stayed in the house for like a week. And the reason I watched it was because I wanted to see what the house looked like inside now. Right. So I watched the whole thing. It's maybe an hour, hour and a half, but that was really cool to me. And if I can find it again, I'll put it in the show notes because I thought it was interesting. Like you can actually see the house because reading the books, you kind of have it in your mind, the images in your mind, but then to really actually see what it looked like in real time as they're recording it, it was very cool. Um, I think some of it was kind of faked, but that's just me. Anyways, um, but yeah, so I'm just really disappointed because again, I just don't think anybody should be living there. I don't think anybody should be staying there, especially with those intentions. You know, your little Aunt Helen comes from Sheboygan and she, you know, she needs a place to stay and you have her stay there for the night. I don't think that that's going to lead to much, but you come in with the intention as an investigator, uh, pretty much willing things to happen. I, I just feel very concerned about it, but it's out of my hands. But I'm just, yeah, that's that's my Conjuring House story that I've been dying to talk about because I'm irritated. Watch out, Sandy's pissed. I forgot to do that today, by the way, because I, know I you forgot did. that um, this is season five of the Sandy and Todd cast. There. Sandy's hey, by the pissed. Way, by the way, I loved our spiel last week. <clears throat> I didn't, did it turn out good? Because I didn't get a it chance to listen. Right. Okay, good. It turned out really good. It, I, 
I thought it was very good. It fits perfectly. And I love the English accent. I mean, it's to die That is for. a gentleman by the name of Dan Woodward who helped us out with that. Dan, um, you're amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So we've Across been Across the pond. We've been trading some stuff. I did something for him yesterday and a couple of weeks ago I'm like, "I've got this project. Do you mind just reading this and just just doing it?" He said, "Sure." He so. did really well for not knowing what the hell he was going to be involved in. So Yeah. I think guy. he did really well. It was really good. The Sunday and Toddcast Spiel. <laughs> Spiel. Spiel. So what? another story that we've talked about briefly on the show is um, Loch Ness. I mean, we've talked a little bit about yeah. like the strangeness of the Loch Ness monster and mm-hmm. something happened um, recently just came out that they were doing some underwater diving in Loch Ness 320 feet deep at the bottom of the lake. There was a frog spotted at the bottom of the lake. At the bottom of the lake? Yeah. A frog? A frog. And so now the thought process is, what if this thing is really a lo- like a large frog or a large salamander, which is another thought process of what Nessie really is? Right. So when you think about like the, you always see that's the same pictures with the little bumps in the water and you're like, Oh, what is that? And blah, blah, blah. So now there's some thought within the last week that maybe it's possible that Nessie's a giant frog. That's been around (laughs) many, 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 many years. I, I am sorry to laugh, but I I guess salamander I might go with. I don't know about frog. I do think it's really odd that there's a frog 350 feet down. There's been questions about the deepest, and this may be the deepest underwater record of an amphibian ever recorded. That's crazy. I do, I will say, I I have been fascinated with the idea of the Loch Ness Monster since I was a tiny child. You know, In Search Of got me going with it, and... um. I do I do believe that there is something. We have one in New York State, Lake Champlain. We have a Loch Ness monster that we call lovingly Champ. About three hours. When you come out here, it's a little too far away or I'd take you because it's beautiful. It borders the New York and Vermont border. Mm-hmm. And um it's just absolutely gorgeous. But um, but I do believe there's something to it. And don't Where's Ogopogo? Isn't that in one of the... Never heard of Ogopogo. Yeah, Ogopogo is, I think, one of the Great Lakes. There's a few of them out there that uh, have gotten names and nicknames over the years. It's apparently up in Canada, in British Columbia. British Columbia, yes. Ogopogo, same exact thing. Loch Ness Monster, Champ, and Ogopogo. Listen, it could be um, a huge snake. I mean, we don't know. It could be. It very well could be. We have no idea. Now, there was a, I was watching one of those caught on film shows a while ago and. Caught on film. (laughs) Here he goes. And up in Alaska, somebody took a video of something moving through the water. It looked like it had ice on its back, but it literally wasn't something just floating. Like it wouldn't have been a log. Right. It literally was winding. And, and it was huge. So do I think that there's the possibility? I, I put these on the same level as like the aliens because we don't have proof they exist. We don't have proof they don't exist at this point. We don't know yet. But do I believe that there's something? Yes. So, oh, man, there's just all sorts of shit we don't know. Oh, my God. The stuff that we... I really enjoyed when we... um. We're talking about that with Jason our author, Offit. Jason, Jason Offit. Offit. Because we got to have him on this season again. Yes. Oh my God. He's so much fun. And he has so many things that he could talk about. Like we could, everything, everything, ghosty stuff, um, cryptozoology, legends, lore, everything. Um, but, anyways, I really enjoyed our talk with him because he sort of has the same mindset as we do in that we just don't know. Was that last do I season? Mean- was yeah, it season yeah, four? beginning of last season. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to say I lean towards, yes, there are things we don't know. We don't even know what our minds can fully do. So how are we going to know if things exist? 
But I think that's fascinating. And I've always wanted to go to Scotland, to Loch Ness. I've always wanted to go to the UK in general. Um, you know, especially with my roots, because I am Irish and Welsh. And, you know, I've always wanted to just go there. So I tried to talk you into it in a couple of years. It'd be expensive, but it would be the trip of a lifetime. I think if if the if, uh, UK government found out that you were planning and planning a trip, they'd put some sort of ban on that. <laughs> Shut <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, Shut there'd up. be a huge ban on how it. About, how about yesterday? You're like, you have a group chat and you're making, um, making arrangements for this Thursday night for dinner with everybody. So Drew and Carissa, Lisa and Dave. And who else is coming? Anybody else? Um, and me. That's it's going to be a small well, group this time. You. Yeah. Yep. And um, so I said, I'm excited. And you're like, you're not invited. I'm like, thanks, thanks for that. But yeah. So my It'll vagina, my him. boobs. I mean, that's why, because we just uh, can't take you out anywhere. I've always wanted a brother like you. Uh, uh-huh. You got it. So um, then the other thing I, I just came across, I heard this story and then I saw some visual evidence of it today and I sent it to you right yeah, before we recorded I'm at it now at the Amarillo Zoo in uh, Texas. People have posted a very good question about a picture that is taken outside a fence at about one twenty five in the morning. Looks like. Well, it looks like a bunch of stuff. Looks like a wolf head person wearing a wolf head. Looks like maybe a chupacabra, uh, a very which thin, is my favorite word in the world. By a way. starving Sasquatch. I like that one. Uh, a crash bandicoot, which I'm not even sure what that is. I don't know. We got to look that up. But somebody also says it looks like they're wearing sunglasses, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but you know, you see these things, and and it reminds me of the Beast of Bray Road, this photo that we showed on like the first season or whatever of our podcast. And it was this dog-like thing with bony arms and standing on hind legs. Who knows, you know? You know what? I'm going to share this to our page and in our group Yeah. Um, on Facebook because I want people to look at this. But it does very much look like the Beast of Bray Road. There is a similarity there. Yeah. There is really a similarity there. It really does very there. much look like that. But it also um, looks like, you know, like somebody who just came from a, uh, a Broadway show uh, playing one of the members of the Cats crew <laughs> from the <laughs> from the musical Cats. Sk- I think it might be well, Skimbleshanks, the my, railway cat. <laughs> the cat of the railway train. My, my my take on it, my initial take on it, because inherently I am Skeptical. Sort of skeptical about most things. Um, I just had somebody send me a picture the other day asking me what I thought it was. And I think I have a pretty good explanation. Um, not paranormal in any way. But I, my first inclination of this picture is to say that I think it may have been someone in motion. It's possible. Like, what kind of picture was it? Who t- you know what I mean? Um, because being in motion or the flash from a camera can actually distort things. Sure. You know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. it, it's not just lens flare. It can actually distort things. And I don't know. I I, I tend to want to say there's a logical explanation for it, although it's incredibly intriguing to me. <laughs> Somebody listed, and this is true too, uh, called it Chester Cheetah from the Cheetos <laughs> commercials because it does kind of it does kind of look does. like that. It does. He's looking for his Cheetos. Um, let's see. Somebody says a canine jumping in the air. I, that does not look like a jumping canine. No, no, no. Although somebody did say this, and it says it loses some ability to figure it out when they only post a still. Which is exactly what my point is that if it's just going to be a still, we don't know if it was in motion. We don't know what kind of camera it was. We don't. I mean, it's exciting. Let's face it. It's exciting to think that it could be something paranormal or crypto or, you know, but by the same token, until we can't. Until we can actually get the situation around it yeah we can't really say for sure it's very somebody said it's rocket from guardians of the galaxy it looks like a naked person with a wolf head on 
<laughs> I don't know where they get naked, but okay. <laughs> but I st- I still want to see who uh, Bandicoot is. We're gonna have to. That is that's that a video up. game. Crash Bandicoot is a oh. video game. Somebody says Ghost of a Native American, maybe. That's interesting, right? Because sometimes somebody they did said, wear the. Somebody said just a meth head with a mullet. <laughs> But I don't know Sonic the Hedgehog. There's some really good ones in there, but um, but yeah, it's hard to say. I don't want to discard it. I really don't because it. I think it would take just a little more looking into that we're not obviously going to get. But um, I mean, who was out there at 1:25 in the morning? Was it a static video camera for the zoo, or was it somebody taking a picture? I think it was a static video camera from the zoo because they're yes. at the bottom of it. You can see the timestamp and all that kind of stuff. So maybe yeah. there is video with it. I don't know, but it hasn't been released as of now, this recording. That would be interesting to see because one still can obviously have still the. See how it's sort of again, I'll post it on our page once the episode comes out. It it sort of is. Um, fuzzy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Listen, there's no closed circuit videos out there ever that are unfuzzy. Everything we ever see of a Sasquatch or a Loch Ness Monster or anything else is fuzzy as fuck. And Dave will be the first one to tell you, and he'll complain about it incessantly, and I agree, that in this day and age, why no one is able to get a clear picture of a Sasquatch or of Joe Smith stealing a pack of cigarettes from the nice and easy with a clear I mean, sometimes you can see it, but not usually. Usually they're really awful grainy photos. Why can't we in this day and age get good quality video cameras? I don't understand. So interesting. It's really intriguing, though, Todd. I don't know. We'll have to see what everybody thinks. We'll put it up on the Facebook page and in the group and uh, see what everybody thinks, because I'm interested in seeing what people think now. So one of the uh, the things that we mentioned early in the program was we'll be incorporating our Empathicary podcast into our Sandy and Todd cast season. So yeah. some of the episodes in this season will be specifically Empathicary podcasts. And I think that's a good way to do this. I think it's going to make a lot of sense. We'll still have both podcasts separately, mm-hmm. but Instead of instead of one week, you get a, to- a Sandy and Todd cast and an empathic carry. They'll be married together as one podcast. Yeah. Still not Which sure is, how we're going to do that exactly, but we uh, we'll, we'll get we'll it done. We'll figure it out. It, you know, I think it's really good because one thing that we've learned in the past year and a half that we've been doing this is that there are a lot of people out there who are empaths who really don't understand what it means or how to sort of manage it. And because of that, they kind of suffer on a daily basis. They don't understand it. And just as importantly, I think there are a lot of people who love people who are empaths and don't understand it either. And so that's not a good mix a lot of the time. I just take that from personal you know, my own personal story of not understanding it till maybe four or five years ago um, or even realizing that I was an empath. And um, especially in the world today with the amount of insanity that is going on right now, it, you could turn off the TV, you could stop looking at social, social media and it's still going to exist. You're still going to be affected by it. In one way, and shape, so, or form. Yep. Right. And a lot of people say, oh, just don't read the news or don't do that. But that's that's not how it works, unfortunately. Well, and here's and, the other thing. Mm-hmm. You can you can bury your head in the sand. But as human beings, uh, part of what we should be doing is helping other people. Yeah. And so in order to help, you kind of have to know what the hell's going on. You know, and, and we, we live in our own little world on a daily basis. And, and I'll be honest, my walls are up high. If I could, you know, just work out of my basement the rest of my life and never walk out of the house, I'd probably be OK mm-hmm. with that. Yep. But I still want good things for people. And I don't like it when I see bad things happen right. and, it, and it bothers me. And you can shut that off. You cannot look at social media. You cannot look at the news and all that. And you can you can think that social media and the news are really the problem. OK, 
That's not the problem. The problem is not waking up to what's going on around the world. Right. So I agree. And, you know, COVID, just to pull COVID into it for a second, COVID was extremely rough for me for two years. Um, I went from 150 miles an hour being a morning show radio host and being out in the public every single day, every single weekend, whether it was physically or just over the air. I was always in touch with people constantly, which is a whole story in and of itself for somebody who's an empath. But I went from 150 miles an hour to zero miles an hour and it affected me and not always in a good way because I was so confused mentally, emotionally, physically. My body was just dealing with all of this stuff as an empath. And I will say, though, in the positive thing, I think that COVID taught me a lot. And I mean a lot about myself, especially as an empath over the past two years. What I can handle, what I can't handle Was I doing too much? Was I not doing enough? It taught me a lot of lessons. And I hope that by what we do with the Empathic Carry podcast, we can not only help people who are empaths, but the people that love empaths to kind of guide them through the process of what it's like to be one. So maybe they can understand it a little bit better. You know, thank God for Dave. Thank God for you. Thank God for people who understand what it's like to be an empath because it's tar- It's hard. And Dave had to not only learn and understand and deal with me as an empath, but then once my medium abilities, my psychic abilities started to flourish, he had to learn how to do that too. So, you know, I think it's an I think it's an important, important thing for us to continue the Empathic Carry podcast. And I think this is the best way to do it, to incorporate it into our show, because everybody knows an empath, whether you realize you do or not. And how it affects your relationship is dependent on how much you understand about that person as an empath. And and this ties in perfectly with that last speech, and that is hashtag poor Dave. <laughs> you guys with that poor Dave thing, but I will say this, he is he is gold. He has really really embraced everything with me and it's really really great. If there so. is a human in my life <laughs> that deserves sainthood, <laughs> saint status from the Catholic Church or the Jewish Church or whatever you guys want to be a part of. Uh, it would be Dave. Dave I, deserves sainthood. I know that you're really looking forward to Dave coming out there much more than me because you two are little besties. So I can't wait. It'll I be can't good. Believe, I can't believe how much alike you two are, too. I mean, in a lot of ways you're not, but in a lot of ways you are. Listen, I like, would never put up with your simple. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what, buddy? We would we would have been divorced a long time ago. <sighs> I think we're much better off this way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I hear Spike in the background. Everything okay? I think he thinks that Dave is home. Dave was getting out early today so we could head up to camp. So gotcha. he's probably home. So, you know, Spike, he's got that. He's like the mayor of the neighborhood. You hear a car door slam, his head's up. You gotta, he could be in a deep sleep, his head's up. Share one of those pictures um, on the, the post of, of him looking out the window. Oh, like my gosh, guarding the neighborhood, yeah. Do I that. will. He gets so excited. He literally does a howl when he sees Dave come home. Like, I'll open up the side door of the house, and he'll watch the driveway with his little paws up on the glass. And as soon as he sees Dave get out of the car, well, as soon as he sees it pull in the driveway... He does a howl. It's hilarious. So I'll share some stuff. So anyway, so next time you guys hear from us, we will be together in Wisconsin. Yep. Yep. It hasn't even been a year yet, which is cool. And then you're hopefully going to come out sometime this year and we'll do some stuff from here, too. So that should be fun. I can't. I'm really excited to show you where I live, too. So. It'll be fun. Well, let's do this. This uh, we'll we'll do what we've been doing brand new for season five, and that's Sandy's spiel. And we bring in our friend Dan to do that for us right now. 
You can find the Sandy and Toddcast on any of the platforms that you normally find your podcasts, including YouTube and Twitter. Be sure to like the Sandy and Toddcast on Facebook to keep up on the latest goings on, including each week's episode. You can also join our group, Stay Weirdos Friends of the Sandy and Toddcast for more fun. Stay Weirdos is a safe place to share your thoughts, feelings, ideas, and random inappropriate memes without judgment. Sandy and Todd also have a podcast called the Empathicary Podcast. It's for empaths by empaths. And if you know an empath, you might want to listen too. Find and like the page on Facebook. And finally, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast and just aren't sure where to start, Sandy and Todd can also help with that too. Mind Garden Media is their latest project where the dynamic duo can guide you every step of the way in your podcasting journey. Editing, producing and consulting is what they do. Like Mind Garden Media on Facebook or email them at themindgardenmedia at gmail.com. And as always, thanks for staying weird. Nice job from across the Yay, pond. Nice I job, love Dan. It. Oh my God, that accent is to die for. I can't do that good of a job. He did an amazing job. So thank you, Dan, for all of your help. Let's put him in the show notes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely put him in the show notes. So. Dan Woodward, Dan, is his name. Dan Woodward. Yep. Well, all right. So here we go. It is, this will air Sunday, and I will be seeing you in. Well, I won't see you Wednesday because we don't get in. Right. I'm not going to see you on Thursday. Thursday. You and I all day long. (sighs) I'm going to start. I'm going to start. We don't even know what we're doing yet. I'm going to start drinking Tuesday just to be. (laughs) We're going to lunch and then we're going to dinner. But we have all day to do something. We'll listen. We'll find stuff. We'll travel. I don't know. We'll figure it out. You know, we could probably fit that in. We probably could. It's like an hour away, right? Yeah. Not that bad. We're going to be traveling all weekend anyway. Yeah, you got the rental unit, so whatever. Yeah, I know. The rental unit. I know. All right. Until next week, have a great week. Uh, We'll talk to you from Door County next week. Until then, bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye.